Welcome back to part two of Reptiles of the Pilbara. In this episode, we're exploring the area at night in search for some of the unique reptiles that call the Pilbara region home. As shown in part one, the impressive gorges in this region provide a unique habitat for many species to thrive in. This time, it's time to find the nocturnal species that spend their days sheltering deep in the cracks and caves, only to come out at night when temperatures drop. Geckos such as these western marbled velvet geckos can be commonly found deep in the gorges. The adhesive pads on their feet help them grip to the steep and smooth rock faces and they're able to navigate through this terrain with ease. Velvet geckos get their name from the incredible soft texture of their skin and scales, which feels similar to velvet to touch. Like all geckos, they possess no physical eyelids and as such rely on cleaning their eyes and face with their tongues. Another gecko species found in the Pilbara region is the Pilbara thick-tailed gecko. Unlike velvet geckos, Thick-tailed geckos have claws instead of the adhesive feet geckos are typically associated with having. That's because instead of needing to scale the steep gorge walls, they've instead adapted to digging short burrows along the loose gravel on the rocky hills and gorge plateaus, often digging under large rocks and amongst spinifex to find shelter from the intense heat of the day or predators that may be lurking nearby. Australian thick-tailed geckos and knob-tailed geckos will often stand tall and proud when feeling threatened to make themselves appear larger and more intimidating. This juvenile thick-tailed gecko was clearly irritated by the ants crawling around its feet as it stands proud, abruptly raising its feet in an attempt to shoo the ants away. As the night progresses, the temperatures drop further. The Pilbara is known for its intense summer heat. However, these nights in late autumn were seeing temperatures quickly drop below 20 degrees Celsius soon after dark. We mostly associate snake activity with warmer temperatures. It's well known that snakes are ectothermic or cold blooded and rely on external heat sources for energy. But we often underestimate the temperatures snakes are comfortable still being active in. This Rosen snake is seen still well and truly active later in the night when temperatures had dropped to below 16 degrees Celsius. Rosen snakes are arguably one of the most vibrantly coloured and patterned smaller lapids in Australia. Their brilliant red and black colours manage to blend in perfectly with the incredible colours of the gravel in this region, helping them camouflage into their environment. Another well-known master of camouflage also inhabits the Pilbara. 
death adders are well-known experts in camouflage right across Australia, and these Pilbara death adders are no exception. Death adders along the east coast of Australia typically spend most of their time hidden amongst thick mulch and leaf litter. However, you'll struggle to find habitats similar to this in the Pilbara. Death adders are known to have one of the fastest strikes of any snake in the world. Their short but stocky body makes them appear overweight, but in actual fact, these are all powerful muscles, enabling them to strike forwards with incredible speed and sometimes no noticeable warning signs. All death adders give birth to live young, and juveniles such as this are small replicas of their adult counterparts. From birth, they must be able to fend for themselves, and as such, share the same toxicity of venom as the adults. However, due to their size, will deliver a much smaller volume of venom to the intended victim. One of the most incredible adaptations for death adders is their tail. Death adders' pattern and colour is suited to blend into their environment, with the exception of their tail. Shaped and coloured like a worm or grub, they're able to manipulate this tail in front of their bodies and wriggle it just like a grub to attract unsuspecting prey. All of this make death adders one of the most truly fascinating genus of snakes in Australia. It's not just the elapids and venomous snakes to be seen in the Pilbara though. The Pilbara also has a large number of pythons in the area as well. This children's or Stimson's python is another common sight after dark. Whilst widespread among many parts of Australia, the children's python from this locality seem to be some of the most beautifully coloured and patterned individuals in the country. Again, the temperature this snake was active in would surprise many people. At 16 degrees, many would assume snake's activity would be highly reduced. However, this python is either actively searching for food or trying to find a suitable place to find shelter while still under the cover of darkness. The genus of Antaresia, often known as the children's python genus, make up a group of the smallest python species in the world. While this juvenile is certainly small, there's another member of the genus in the Pilbara that's even smaller, and a snake I'm most interested in finding. As you can imagine, smaller snakes are often harder to spot, especially when they're able to blend in so well with their surroundings. I spent some time in different areas in the Pilbara, searching for these snakes, turning up different wildlife of all kinds along the way including this beautiful Rothschild's rock wallaby, a small macropod adapted perfectly to live amongst the steep, rocky terrain. These piles of large boulders create the perfect habitat for both rock wallabies and the python I'm searching for, but sometimes it's in the places we least expect it that we end up finding what we're looking for. And here it is, the appropriately named pygmy python, the smallest python species in the world. Found here, utilising the man-made steel walkway using the grates as an appropriate perching site. Amazingly, the coloration of this snake even blends into that of the man-made steel structure. Its rusty iron colour and texture matching that of the snake's colour and pattern, a surprisingly still appropriate place to lay in ambush. This pygmy python would be around 30 centimetres long if outstretched, a typical sub-adult, with adults only reaching 50 to 60 centimetres in length, significantly smaller than any other snake in the genus, or in fact, any other python in the world. Like all pythons, they lay eggs, and mothers will lay coiled around these eggs until they hatch. Pygmy python hatchlings are so small that they may weigh as little as two to four grams. All pythons are also non-venomous, known for catching and strangling their prey to suffocate them. While pythons are often known for eating huge fruit items, pygmy pythons will however take much smaller prey, such as geckos, frogs and skinks. This pygmy python decides perhaps perching on top of the walkway isn't the safest place to be, and instead makes its way under the grate where it can still wait for prey items that may wander by, whilst also having protection from the steel structure above.
This wraps up my time in the Pilbara region. I hope you've enjoyed these videos, and like always, please be sure to let us know what you think in the comments below. We'll see you next time for more wild Aussie adventures.